So <laughs> tell us about the world for the Cafaldi Chronicles. I know you've done a lot of work on that. Tell our listeners what all went into creating that world. Oh, well, um, it started when I was young. I mean, initially, uh, when I was a kid, I was, uh, I was younger than the other kids in my grade. Um, I was super skinny, which I don't have that problem anymore, but I was very, very skinny. <laughs> I was very short. I wore glasses. Um, so of course I played Dungeons and Dragons, um, because I had to, and all of, <laughs> all of us did. So I tried my hand at being a dungeon master and I, I was awful at it compared to some of my friends who really made, I mean, like they, it would be scary and they were, they were just really good at setting the mood. And the only part I liked was the world building, which of course turns out great for writing. So I ended up just, I spent so much time, like what cities and areas produced what? <laughs> you know, I mean, almost like, you know, in school, Russia produces wheat and, you know, or whatever. It was like that. And, you know, this, they make a great gold wine and these people do this and, and things are more expensive here. You know, these things are more expensive in this city because of these reasons. And then here's all the people who ever ruled this city, you know, I mean, ridiculous things that are not going to come up in a, in a book unless it's a really bad book. Um, which, yeah, here's a list of all the people who ever were king here. So, um, but as I did that, um, many story ideas popped up just because, you you know, you know all these things. So um, the reader magnet I use for um, the Cathaldi newsletter list I have is based on the fact, so there's 10 major gods and I know who has been the, in charge of them and, and history of those. And the one that's the most fun, I think, is the God of War. And they select their leaders through combat. They just get together in a big old arena and the last guy standing is in charge. And so I wrote a short story where Vaughn, who's a character in um, the Cathaldi Chronicles, and Dirk's friend, it's a prequel and he needs Dirk's help during that process. And so, I mean, it's different and it was fun. And that short story came about just because of all the time I've wasted or invested, depending on how you look at it, um, over the years in the, the back story of that world. Um, and I love it. So, I mean, I can see writing a zillion books and, a, and another zillion short stories about the characters and the places and the organization <laughs> and the history. So, um, I mean, one of the stories I'm going to write for Tales of Cathaldi is going to be, it's going to be called Birth of Cathaldi, and it's going to be the, um, how the Cathaldi were created, and they I'm paralleling uh, the creation of the Nazi party. So there's a lot of similarities there. Um, and so I, I one, of, one of the other authors who wrote something for Tales of Gatholi, uh has the gods discussing the great cataclysm that they end up launching to attack the Cathaldi. And so all the gods are the characters, and it also takes place 400 years ago, although Birth of the Cathali takes place even before that, because by 400 years ago, they're a main, a big power. It's like 150 years before when they're, when they're just starting. But um, I like the idea of that you're, you're writing in different time periods and, you know, really fleshing out the world. Um, the way, you know, Tolkien had things in different ages or um, uh, Ellie Modisette with the, the Recluse series, you know, there's stuff from all, you know, all yeah. these different time periods. I like that. Um, I feel like it, it really fleshes things out and you, you go back and reread and after you've read the material from the past that takes place in the past, you're like, oh, now I get the connection drawn later in this book. So 
I believe it makes it more fully developed. I can't wait to read it. That's going to be exciting. Well, thank you. I'm, so, I'm having fun. What does your writing process look like? Do you have a set schedule for your writing? Yeah, I wish. <laughs> oh, no, and it's funny. I was thinking about that this morning, how it's changed. It used to be I would do a lot of writing at night, you know, after my wife went to bed. She gets up really early for work, um, like at 4 a.m., like a crazy person. That's early. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, now I'm just so damn tired. <laughs> at night. So I try and work in the morning. So I get up. Um, my wife and I just recently moved in with my parents because my mother has Alzheimer's. So we we try and we do all the cooking because my mom can't cook anymore. We, we do a lot of cleaning and then we have the giant garden. Um, and my dad, my parents are almost 80. And so even my dad just needs help around the property. Um, so I try and do a lot of that. Uh, but I get up in the morning, water the garden, um, and then try to write, write that. And if I can be done by noon, that's awesome because then there's you know like today i need to make a peach pie uh i need to make something Ooh. for dinner and i'm thinking a um chili relleno quiche oh that I, sounds good <laughs> i picked a bunch of poblano peppers um yeah so and then we don't buy shredded cheese because i was watching an episode of america's test kitchen and they're like all shredded cheese has plastic to keep it from you know sticking um, so it's that's it's not a, okay <laughs> i mean it's it's a type of plastic stuff so i mean it's edible yeah. but yeah i read i heard that and i was like oh because i thought i was all fancy buying shredded parmesan instead of grated parmesan and i'm like oh well now we're never you know buying any of that so we buy blocks of cheese and chips so we are like cheese nutheads we have like seven kinds of cheese in the house all the time I can't so, say that I'm any different because I have probably about the same because I like to yeah. cut up the blocks of cheese and have it yes. with my wine and it makes good snacks huh? for my son. <laughs> so. Exactly. So making a quiche, I love quiche and making a quiche is easy because we always have cheese and we always have a ton of eggs. So um, yeah, chillery and, and I bought some cubed ham to go Ooh. in with it. So it'll be poblano and ham. That'll be uh, good. Quiche. That sounds really good. I think so. And yeah. we make our own crust. I mean, we make everything from scratch. So yeah. we're, we are insane about all of that. And, um, but if I can finish by noon, then I can do it. So I really only get a few hours and then I sneak in the marketing stuff and the, the editing and all that. I can do that at, at night. Um, and I, I've now started a second newsletter because crazy uh, for the humor stuff, mm -hmm. because with, I mean, I can market the Cataldi stuff on there, but also you're as stupid as you are fat and you get what you steal. I'm going to mention them in the Cataldi newsletter, but it doesn't really fit. It's not an, mm -hmm. I've built a fantasy audience for it. So I've started a new one. It's got less than a hundred subscribers so far, but I mean, I just started. And um, so now the first and third Mondays, my fantasy newsletter goes out and the second and fourth, my humor list goes out. So I'm working on a newsletter all the time you know, trying to write content. Cause I don't just say buy my books mm -hmm. in the, in the fantasy newsletter, there's a Dirk story that gets like 500 words, every issue. Um, and it, uh, Kralnik, the dwarf is in that. Um, so it's Kralnik and, and Dirk prequel. And that's a lot of fun, but, um, and then I try and write, I do either do interviews or book reviews or the characters tell something about the world, you know, a little world building information or, so there's a lot of stuff in it and those take a while. Um, so I spend a lot of that at night trying to get those done. But I, I wish before we moved in with my parents, I had a lot more free time. <laughs> um, and there were times when I would just, my wife would leave town for work for a week or go on a girl's trip and I would get up in the morning and write all damn day you know until I couldn't stay awake anymore and a whole week of that I'd get so much done and I love that I wish I could do that 
but that's not realistic with the responsibilities I have. Yeah. And, and then of course my addiction to food and gardening and cooking and baking. All you know, healthy I mean, addictions. So they are. Yeah. I mean, much better than, than a lot of other addictions, but time consuming. I mean, just the dishwashing is time consuming, let alone, I mean, if you make, you know, all the crusts and, and it's a and, lot of, yeah, a lot of dishes. So I, I feel you on that because I try to do more cooking from scratch than like buying stuff. Sometimes I do go buy. I'm just like, yep, not doing it today. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, we, since the move, we definitely have to, we don't have as big of a kitchen. Yeah. It's very cramped and we're, we're still trying to unpack and organize things here. So, so before we moved here, we hadn't bought a loaf of bread in, I don't know how long. And we've been buying bread because I just don't have time to make bread all the time. Yeah. Because sometimes we make like bread five times, you know, we'll yeah. make some biscuits, we'll make some, you know, we, we make a lot of uh, double French bread. Um, oh, it's so good. So yeah, I, we're definitely compromising. But the other thing is during the summer, we'll, when we have so many vegetables coming in, the processing time of that, it, and it's so healthy to eat, you know, mm -hmm. all of that, but we, we have to sacrifice some of the other things that we would normally do. In the winter, you know, when we're not growing fresh vegetables, it's a lot easier to spend time making bread, say. So. Yeah. All right, well, go ahead and tell our viewers where they can find all of your work. Well, I only publish my stuff on Amazon. Um, I tried going wide earlier in my career and like 85% of them, of the sales were on Amazon anyway. And so my stuff's in Kindle Unlimited. I was on Amazon. <clears throat> I have a website, cathaldi.com. That has links to everything. Um, and then I participate in the Twitter and the Facebook. Um, I have a Patreon account that no one has, has signed up for, and I never do anything with it. So I've really invested a lot of time on that. Um, but yeah, the website's the best place. It's, it's a crap website. I mean, I don't do a lot there. Uh, mainly I list like media appearances, like this will be listed there and then where you can get the books, but I don't, I don't do anything on it really. Yeah. Which makes me sound lazy, but it's like, I only, you know, I still have to sleep sometime, you know, it's it crazy. Is a lot of work. All right, yeah. everybody. So this is Ron and I will have his links to all his stuff in the comments below. Make sure you follow him and check out his books. Thank, thank you for you. being with us this morning, Ron. Oh, thank you. Great to see you. You can't stop me now.